Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. So welcome to our class on faith. We'll pray and uh, spend some time continuing to learn principles of faith so that we can be strengthened in our walk with the Lord. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, teaching us the very foundation of faith. Lord, as we study about the life of Abraham, we pray that, uh, Lord, we will learn many new things. And God, that uh, we, we will have an anchor, oh God, Lord, to hold on to, that we will continue to seek you with all our hearts and the way Abraham uh, became the father of uh, faith, Lord, that we too will have a testimony uh, because of our faith. We praise you once again for um, this amazing grace. We worship and honor you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are moving on to the next chapter here, which is chapter 6, and talk about Abraham, who is the father of faith. When we look at the life of Abraham, uh, it's almost like God called him out of nowhere. There was this man who was called out of a certain place. Uh, we know that it's modern day Iran. So that's where he came from. And when God called this man, he said, um, you know, you just go to where I'm calling you, wherever I'm leading you. So the Bible says that he went not knowing where he was going. So that was the kind of faith that Abraham had that without the destination in mind, he was obedient to follow the instructions of God. So Abraham went on like that. And there are different instances of faith that we see in his life journey. So it's not just the fact that he left his home, but you know, later on we see how there was a time when um, his nephew, Lot, who came with him, chose a more prosperous land. And uh, Abraham said, okay, fine, you know, you take what you want, whatever is left is mine. Don't you think it takes faith for all this? Faith in God that God will bless me. God is there for me. God will help me. And then we uh, see how God truly prospered him because our prosperity comes from God. So he didn't compete. He didn't compare. He put his faith in God and God prospered Abraham. And then we continue to see his journey. God promised him, I will give you a son. Now that was probably one of the toughest promises that Abraham waited on God for. It took a very long time, right? And God also promised him that he would give him um, a land with certain boundaries. And we know that, uh, you know, the promise, it's fulfilled in a sense that uh, today, like Abraham, uh, sorry, uh, the descendants of Abraham have occupied, you know, land, but then, you know, there are other things that are going on. But uh, the point is that here is a man who believed whatever God told him, okay? And there was a point when his faith was tested. We see this, um, I think Genesis 22, where God told him, go and sacrifice your only son. Again, he believed God. So this is the thing about Abraham. He was a man who trusted God. He was a man who depended on God. And he was not afraid. Uh, he never questioned God's integrity, you know, God's character. He was confident. Anything God said, yes, sir, you know, that's, that's the way he worked. And so the Bible teaches us that uh, Abraham is given the status as the father of faith. Okay, so the father of faith. So if somebody is the father of something, we learn from them. Isn't it? Uh, if the, somebody is the father of, uh, uh, you know, a science, we know that they have made significant achievements in that area. That's why we look at them. We learn from their lives. So today we are going to learn from the life of Abraham. What is it uh, that Abraham did? How did he believe God? And how God honored him? So let's go now to our um, notes here. Romans 4.11. Okay, that says, the father of all those who believe. Remember, we said the Bible speaks of Abraham as the father of our faith. So we must have sung that song in our Sunday school, right? Father Abraham. <laughs> so he's our father because we 
are believers. We are people of faith. And so Abraham becomes our father of faith, father of all those who believe in Romans 4, uh, verse 11. So we who believe, we can walk in the steps of faith of our father that our father Abraham had, Romans 4 and verse 12. Can somebody quickly read Romans chapter 4, verses 11 and 12? And can he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, through they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imput, uh, imputed to them also, and the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. Okay, so we are told that he has become a symbol to follow, not just for the Jews. Those of the circumcision means the Jews. Those who are not circumcised is the non-Jews. Whoever is a non-Jew, but we believe. So then that includes all of us, right? So he has become the father of all those who believe, whether they are Jews or they are non-Jews. So he's the father of everyone who believes. Now about the life of Abraham, we've already shared a summary. Basically, I shared with you the times when Abraham believed God with his whole heart. We have a list here. Okay, so I'm not going to go through each one of uh, uh, the points given here. But while we spoke about the greatness of Abraham. Did he ever make mistakes? What do you think? Yeah? So does anything come to your mind in terms of, uh, you know, going away from God's instruction or God's promise? Yeah, can I answer? When Sarah yes. gave the slave, Egyptian slave, uh, sorry, could you come again? Couldn't hear you very clearly, Sri Raj. Yeah, when Sarah was not able to bear the child, yes, and uh, she promoted uh, the Egyptian slave uh, to be utilized as a co concubine for mm -hmm. Abraham. That was yes. a mistake. Correct. So that was a mistake that he made, and um, we also got an answer here in class. Um, that was one and did you did you mention anything else Vinay? Oh yes, he lied about uh, uh, his wife being his sister. But then, you know, as they call it, uh, she was from the same lineage. So he kind of tried to use that for his benefit. However, that that is a lie because he was misguiding uh, the people in Egypt. But obviously, you know, he got into, uh, he would have gotten into trouble just that God protected so uh, you know the the king came to know because of all the afflictions he came to know that Abraham was lying okay so yeah there are mistakes that Abraham made in his lifetime um, then why is it that God still says that he's a father of faith he's not hundred percent perfect we see that there were faults there were gaps and why do we still consider him the father of he faith? never gave up okay he never gave up true yeah yeah he trusted he trusted God yeah he trusted God He obeyed God. Yeah. So all, all those are the good parts of what Abraham did. But there are also these mistakes. So then why is he still considered the father of faith?
because god chose him okay so if god chooses us then do our mistakes uh, i mean our, our mistakes okay no it's not no. that the god yeah. chose him because he was the uh, first person in the bible when god chooses mm -hmm. and uh, he walk accordingly whatever god said without any doubt he was able to walk with him sure so those are all the those are all the instances on the basis of which he is being called the father of faith what i am asking you is there were also times when he actually did not do the right thing then why why is god still considering him the father of our faith Yes, but there were mistakes. Then how? Okay. Uh, so just two mistakes. Well, see, the point is. I know, but the the mistakes were uh, at least you know, uh, one of them is. it it continues to have consequences right so uh, there are consequences when we sin there are consequences we can never justify sin we can never justify sin because as much as we talk about god's grace god's grace it's free we are, we you, we receive it for free for sure you know we enjoy it for free rather but it is expensive for god it cost god his only son to pay for our sin so any mistake small big mistake sin is a sin and it is against the holiness of god it's serious it's severe because uh, if we go back again to the garden of eden she just disobeyed once we can say that right it was just about eating a fruit but why did the whole world get corrupted with sin that is the nature of sin sin will corrupt sin will destroy sin will damage okay and uh, uh, it it cannot be undone that easily so god had to send his own son and he had to die for sin to be paid for he took upon himself all of our sin so it's a serious matter small mistake big mistake mistake is a mistake sin is sin okay however when we look at god god is also god of grace it's not that god overlooked abraham's sin okay there are consequences when we we do something wrong whether we like it or not the results will be there sometimes those consequences are small okay fine after a while it do, doesn't affect us but there are times when the consequences can be very severe which is why you and i you know uh, we we have god's grace i'm not denying that but having god's grace doesn't mean uh, looking at you know righteousness lightly like yeah okay god is good god is gracious he will forgive we can do whatever we want it shouldn't be like that because sin is um, sin is serious sin is damaging sin has consequences and uh, there's a very expensive price that god had to pay for sin to be atoned for his own blood he had to shed so we can't take it lightly now having said all these things god is gracious when we look at hebrews chapter 11 when god has written down names of people there is an abraham who went wrong there is a sarah who laughed at the promise of god there is a david you know who uh, engaged in adultery god forgave them that's what it shows us so god is a gracious god he still chose to uh, highlight or bring forward the goodness of this man which is faith in god so that's how we understand it god has been gracious and he has added him in the list remember we said all the uh, the people of god they they had a good testimony with god so though abraham sinned he still had a good testimony with god because god forgave god was gracious 
Okay, he never condones. God will never condone sin. Sin is sin. But God forgave and God gave grace. That's how he is still included in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And he has a good report through his faith. So because of God's grace, uh, Abraham continues to be called as the father of faith. And we know each one of us we experience in our own lives and we must never take God's grace lightly. God's grace is, um, you know, it, it's really, it shows how much God has chosen to let go uh, in order to uh, love, continue loving us. So we hold God's grace very um, uh, honorably. Now let's go ahead. Let's read this passage. Romans chapter 4 verses 17 to 21. Uh, could somebody read it? Can even probably read slowly so that all will understand. Romans 4, 17 to 21. In the presence of him whom he believed, yeah. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall you descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead and the deadness of Sarah whom uh, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was also able to perform Okay, so this shows us how Abraham believed. He's the father of our faith and we need to learn from his faith. So we are looking at how he believed so that we can also believe the same way. Now let's start off from verse 17 where it says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God give lives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did so here is a virtue of abraham that abraham believed so many a times we look at the the different aspects written here in this passage as the steps of abraham's faith so how did abraham journey in believing God. Now, these are the steps of faith, which we also can apply because they are steps, right? So we can follow the same thing. The first step of faith is that he believed God. And it says believed hyphen God. So whenever God says something, do we know God well enough to believe him? So if our relationship with God is um, deep, strong, we understand who God is, his character, we recognize his heart for us, the moment God says something, we believe. That's what Abraham did. As a father of our faith, what is his example? First thing, whatever God is saying, we believe. Because Abraham believed God, it says. So when God promises us anything, so how does God's promise generally come? Comes through the word of God. There are so many. We don't have to wait for, okay, what is it? Like God told Abraham, uh, I will give you a son. Is there a particular promise for me? Even if we don't yet know of a specific promise for us like that, there are so many promises in God's word. To who we are in Christ, who, who we have become, all the blessings that we have, you know, the blessings of the cross uh, and all, the, all that we possess, how victorious we are, how we are more than conquerors, how we have authority. There are many promises in God's word. We can believe those promises. When God says something, believing it, 
that is the example of Abraham. That's the first step. If we must be clear uh, that this is from the Lord and we are ready to believe. A heart that believes. That's the first thing that you and I need. Okay, so Abraham gave us that example. Remember, we listed out the different things he did. And every time God told him, okay, leave your people, believed, uh, right? Then uh, you'll have descendants, believed. You will have, uh, uh, you know, you'll have land, he believed. You will, you will, what else? Yeah, even when it came to sacrificing Isaac, he still had faith in God. We don't know what he was thinking. But the way he knew God, he knew God was too good. So boldly he went with his son to sacrifice him. So every time Abraham believed. So how is it that we are uh, responding to God when we read his word or when we hear his promise? We must believe. That's the first step. Now let's move on. Verse 18 of Romans 4. It says, contrary to hope, in hope believed. So that he became the father of many nations, according to what, what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Contrary to hope, believed. Why contrary to hope? Let's take, huh? Exactly. So in the case of the promise that you're going to have, a, you, you will have a, son actually god said you will have many descendants so to have many descendants you should have at least one descendant he didn't even have one descendant okay second he's already 100 years old sarah is you know around 90 years old so where is the hope there is no hope logically you know naturally there is no hope but God's promise said something which defied the natural understanding. And when something like that happens, it's difficult to believe. But Abraham believed anyway. Can you imagine? It's hard to believe because the facts are different. We saw that even in Hebrews 11, it says, you know, when his body was dead, Okay, when it was the it, when it was past the age of childbearing, God had promised them, now you will have a son. Against all odds. Okay, so that means that there are facts of life which can say that our situation is hopeless. There are facts of life which can say that. God's promise is not logical. In those situations, can we still believe? You know, if let's say, for example, there is a medical report. It says this is what the condition is. There is no hope. But if God, in those moments, you get a word from the Lord and God says, no, nothing will happen. You will be fine. How to believe? The report is saying something else. And God is saying something else. That was a similar situation for Abraham. But against all odds, Abraham believed. So he decided, okay, I'll take God's report. I'm not denying the natural facts. Remember we said, faith is not denying facts. Yeah, fact is, he's very old. Sarah is very old. It's too late to have a child, to raise a child. And in this age, nobody is denying the facts, but still believing God that it is possible. So that is his example. So when God promises us something and it feels like uh, in the natural, it's not possible. Or let's use this word hopelessness. There is no hope. Okay, what is hope? The biblical term for hope, I think we will come to it, is uh, certainty. Whenever in English we use the word hope, we say, I hope it rains today. That means it may or may not rain, but I'm wishing that it will rain today. But when you go back to 
the biblical language in which you know these passages were written the term hope there is very certain if we say i hope that means it's going to happen so that is the way abraham hoped in god when he hoped it meant that god is going to do something for him so in a situation when there is no hope he believed in such a way that hope was stirred up in him if god said it i'm sure he knows what he's talking about and he's able to do it right so hope was stirred up in him and finally that particular uh, uh, passage says that he so that he became the father of many nations when he held on in hope there came a time when he actually had one son and you know then he went on to having many other descendants so against all odds abraham believed or let's put it this way against all hope in hope he still believed so that again is a step that we need in our lives what is the first step believe believe god okay second when you actually start believing we may realize that naturally there is no hope then in that situation against all hope stir up hope our own you know hope in the lord in hope we continue to believe that is the second step everyone's clear yeah great now let's move on to the third step verse 19 and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of sarah's womb okay this again you know we said first there's no hope but hope is stirred up we carry hope in that situation the third one is there are circumstances that will keep pulling us down whenever we look at the situation we'll realize it's actually not possible in the case of abraham his age and the deadness of sarah's womb these were the realities these were the realities for how long when we study about the life of abraham he waited 25 years before isaac was born after the promise of god so imagine with me 25 years what is his reality i'm too old sarah's womb is dead god said but how can it happen the reality is facing them every day for 25 years circumstances are there nothing has changed is 25 years a long time to believe god yeah and when circumstances are saying that it can't happen it's a very long time but abraham still believed and how did he believe this is the step which you and i need to follow not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body okay so what is the step not becoming weak in our faith what can make make us weak in our faith doubts yeah disobedience acting in disobedience our own thoughts fear okay so there are many things that can come and affect our faith but how do we keep our faith strong that's a third step not becoming weak in faith those days abraham did not have the you know the canon of scripture where they had put the bible together but i'm sure he he thought about god a lot he thought about the promises of god a lot he was a devout man whose heart was connected to who god is and his words so he must have focused on that and not focus so much on his circumstances if 
at all he was to focus more on his circumstances do you think his faith would have become weak yes his faith would have become weak because he would have looked at the situation again and again and said how can it be it can't be some i cannot you know it, it's it's not possible he would have convinced himself if he focused on his circumstances so two things here his weak uh, his faith was not made weak so how should we follow it we should keep our faith strong now how to keep our faith strong the word of god faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so when i'm constantly in the word of god okay let's let's say god is calling you to do an assignment it seems very tough for you it seems very difficult for you you keep going back to scripture that talks about who you are in christ so faith is coming into your heart you know that i have the mind of christ uh, you know i am a child of god um, uh, uh, the holy spirit dwells inside me so all of this you're repeating to yourself you're meditating on these scriptures again and again and again and again the task still is big but what's happening you're not focusing on the negatives you're strengthening yourself in faith your faith is not becoming weak that's how abraham operated he did not let his faith become weak so that's what you and i have to do never let our faith become weak okay and don't look at the circumstances it's not saying deny the circumstances no but don't consider them or don't focus on them so if we keep saying that oh the assignment is too big i can't do it i can't do it uh, i don't know how to do this i have never done this before others are better than me what's happening i'm weakening my faith though i am in the word i'm focusing on all the impossibilities and my faith starts to leak and very soon there'll be no faith left but abraham what he did is he was strong on the promise of god he never let his faith become weak and he did not consider it says that means he is not focusing yeah it's a reality it's too late so so what god can still do it he's not focusing on the facts and that is important for us sometimes we focus too much on the facts and those things convince us that no god can't do it right so these are the two steps for us to remember we have to continue to stand in faith and not let the natural circumstances weaken us okay uh it's again going back to the example of joshua and caleb with 12 spies right they go to the promised land they come back these two men they carry a good report why because their focus the land is the same situation is the same they also saw giants but the focus was different the 10 spies said there are giants in the land we can't take it they'll crush us that's the way they are thinking but joshua and caleb said no it's a land flowing with milk and honey yeah we can take them no problem and ultimately who are the people who actually stepped into the promised land the people of faith joshua caleb what about the others they never went why the way we see life the way we see circumstances situations it matters yeah we observe them we note them but we are not going to give our full attention to that we will focus on what god can do who god is and it will happen that is abraham's attitude that is his step that's how he's going through his faith journey that's how you and i should go through our faith journey don't look at the impossibilities there will be many impossibilities we rise above it we acknowledge it but we 
rise above it because we are concentrating more on what God can do. That's how Abraham was able to continue. But at one point, he became, a, you could say, discouraged. Obviously, you know, as we are journeying with God, it's natural. Sometimes we may encounter circumstances where people are saying so many things, um, you know, other or, or the situation is such that we feel, God, what is this? Nothing is happening, right? So when Abraham was discouraged, God encouraged him. And if we are like that, we continue to hope in God, even if we are discouraged, God will encourage us. How did God encourage Abraham? In Genesis chapter 15, God sort of renews his vision. God shows Abraham the sky. He says, Abraham, do you see the sky? Do you see the stars in the sky? I'm going to give you those many descendants. God shows Abraham the sand. He's a desert man. Okay, that's all he can see. He can see the, the beautiful sky. He can see the sand. So God tells Abraham, can you see the sand? Can you count the sand? No, you can't. As many are the sand, I will give you descendants. What is God doing? Encouraging. God will encourage those who are holding on to their faith. So even when Abraham's faith was going down, God said, don't worry, I will do it. I will do it for you. And God gave him the confidence. So today, if you and I are feeling discouraged, surely we have a God who will encourage us. Then what did Abraham do? He held on. You know, every time he would walk in the desert, I'm sure, he would encourage himself and say, hey, one day I will have descendants as many as these stars. I will have descendants, you know, as many as the sun. He would have encouraged himself from that point onwards. And that's how we must encourage ourselves. We speak the word of God. We declare the promises of God and we say, God will do it. Yeah, the waiting is long, but God will surely do it. Right? And get the word of God inside your heart. We know Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verses 20 to 22. Uh, it, it says how we must pay attention to the word of God. Pay attention to God's word, not to the voices around. Because people may say the opposite things. Our thoughts may say the opposite things. Satan will say the opposite things. So a lot of accusation coming from everywhere. Again, go back to the example of Joshua. He's going around the mount, around the wall. The people would have said, what are we doing, Joshua? All the, uh, you know, people are laughing at us. Jericho, people of Jericho are laughing at us. This is not how you do war, walking around the walls. Satan may have put thoughts in Joshua's mind and said, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? His own thoughts may have been, did I hear God right? Did I make a mistake? So many people are with me. What if the walls don't fall down? Today is the seventh day. Thoughts. But he had to hold on to the promise of God in the midst of those circumstances. And finally, the walls fell down. So this is the way in which we go about. So what is the first step? Believe God. What is the second? Against all hope, in hope. Yeah, believe in God. What is the third one? Not become weak in our faith and should not look at the circumstances. All right. The fourth one is he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. So now that he is holding on, maybe at some point, the doubts, the unbelief, the discouragement is so real, so real. At this point, you're almost like, you know, I need to call up God and ask him, did you really say this? <laughs> because I'm not seeing anything, God. In such a situation, Abraham has become so strong now. By now, Abraham's faith, it's become solid. You know, when you use cement, 
when you mix it it's wet right and even if you put it and you put something in it the shape will change but after you have set it so by now what has happened to abraham's faith set he has strengthened his faith he has not looked at the circumstances his faith has become so solid and at this point everything is hitting at his faith unbelief is coming and hitting confusion is coming and hitting satan's accusations are coming and hitting maybe his own family members you know sarah others are all telling him what abraham nothing is happening but by now he is not wavering at the promise of god with unbelief his faith has become rock solid okay everyone you say what you want to say but i know what god told me i'm going to stand on my faith so we have to come to this place in our own lives where we've understood god's promise we've journeyed with him and at this point our faith it's like become like that set cement faith is the substance of things remember we said so something solid a framework a confidence within ourselves an assurance within ourselves that god is surely going to do something tomorrow so abraham's faith has come to the next level the next step where he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief so in our lives when our faith becomes so strong we can experience fear but we overcome it we can experience worry but we can overcome it we can experience unbelief it may try to come inside but we overcome it or maybe past experiences we may recall and say oh but it happened last time like that all these things also we can overcome everything we can overcome at this stage because our faith has become so strong abraham did not waver in his faith through unbelief so we also come to a place we should try to come to this place where we are sure of the promises of god so this is the fourth step now the fifth step i think i'll do this and stop for today it says but was strengthened in faith giving glory to god so his faith has become solid and once his faith has become solid he's already started thanking god you know we may have seen abraham taking up the guitar if he had one and just singing songs of worship songs to god and all of that and people are wondering why is this man so happy you know why is he praising god he doesn't have anything yet but he was giving thanks to god before the fulfillment of the promise so this is the fifth step have you and i reached that place in our faith where today we are already thanking god god thank you this is what you're going to do tomorrow thank you you have already healed me the manifestation will come abraham is thanking god before the promise is fulfilled don't you think his faith is strong already yeah it's already very strong no wonder he's praising god okay so in our journey of faith have we come to a place where we are waiting for the fulfillment we are waiting for the manifestation but in the spiritual it's already done we believe it 100% god you have done it you have healed me you have provided for me you have made a way where there is no way your favor is upon my life and we are already singing we are already worshiping we are already thanking god you know it's a wonderful place to be to already start thanking god where we are so convinced that we can rejoice at this point so that's how abraham journeyed in faith no wonder he's called as the father of our faith so we've learned a few steps today okay let's just recall those steps and then we'll come back and complete it in the next session so what are the steps of abraham believe god against all hope in hope believe okay 
Yes, do not become weak in your faith and do not look at the circumstances. What is the fourth one? Fourth one? Do not waver, right? Through unbelief. And the fifth one? Strengthen, giving glory to God. Okay, so five things to remember. Uh, and I would request you can always go back home and think about your own life uh, and, you know, the various promises of God. Are we following these steps as far as those promises are concerned? If not, where are we losing our focus? Where is unbelief coming in? Work on those areas. Okay, so uh, let's pray and close for today. And I request somebody from the class to lead us. Please take the mic and uh, pray aloud. life in every circumstances lord lord i pray that you will build the faith in our lives lord like Heb like abraham lord lord in what whatever circumstances we lose our hope lose our trust lord let us build our faith in you and let us journey through that faith lord and give us that understanding and knowledge to depend on you and to trust in you master in jesus name i pray amen 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. All the best for your uh, assignment. I hope it's going well. Please hand it in before the deadline. The assignment will close on the last date. So if you're attempting to uh, submit after that, it will not happen. So please make sure that it is submitted on time. Okay. Thank you. Bye for now.